Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Synology RT6600 AX. This is a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 router and Synology did send this to me and I want to thank them for that. In saying that, this isn't a paid sponsorship video. I'm going to be showing you how to configure it and tell you what I think about it. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. And I also have affiliate links down in the description below. So first, let's go take a closer look at the RT6600AX. On the front of the Synology router, we have all of our LED indicators as well as six antennas. On the back we have a USB, we have one WAN port which is 2.5 gigs, we have one LAN port which is 2.5 gigs and it could be in low balancing and then we have three gigabit ports. Now that we've had a closer look at the Synology router, let's go over the topology and what we're going to be doing in this video. At the top we have the primary internet connecting to the Synology router. Currently this is all we're going to do, we're just going to be doing the initial setup and then we'll create some networks. In the next video I'll show you how to connect it to a network switch We'll put another access point on it and then another Synology NAS and we'll create some firewall rules to allow only our staff to be able to reach the NAS. Within the Synology router, we're only able to create five different VLANs. So what we're going to be using is the admin at 192.168.1.1, staff at 192.168.5.1, guest at 192.168.15.1, and then IoT at 192.168.25.1. I have this computer plugged into the Synology router and we're showing that we're not online right now because we need to start the initial setup. And to do that, we need to go into a web browser and then go to 192.168.1.1. And this brings us to the Synology router page. It says link and share all possibilities and we're going to start. The next step is to set up an admin account. So I'll put the username and then the password and we'll accept to the terms and then press next. After we put in our admin password, it's saying set up your Wi-Fi network and we can't bypass this. So we need to put in an SSID. I'm just going to put test. I'm going to put a password of test1234. And then we'll confirm the password at test1234. And then it's asking us for location. Under the location, I'm in Canada and then we'll press next. Now the next step is to choose our operation mode and there's two different modes that we could choose. Wireless router, which is what we're gonna be using because we wanna use the Synology as our primary firewall. We could hit the drop down menu and do wireless AP. If we do this, this bridges all the LAN, WAN, and WLAN interfaces together, and this is just to use it as an access point. We could also set up external access to the SRM, which we're not gonna do, and then we'll press next. For our internet connection, we're just doing it by DHCP, so it will be auto IP. But if you have PPPoE or if you have a static, you could set that here. Now it's setting up the Synology router and it says it's going to take about three minutes. Now it says, congratulations, you've set up your Synology router. We could start managing now or we could add access points. We don't have any other access points, so we're going to start managing. It says, welcome to SRM. Explore the latest highlights of the Synology router manager and check out how you can manage your network. Showing us our network configuration, customize your Wi-Fi networks and multiple SSIDs, configure quality of service and VLANs, and specify your network admin features. We have safe access and threat prevention, so bring parental controls to next level and maintain your network security by blocking potential threats in network traffic. And then we can manage it by our mobile app, which I probably won't do, and we'll press OK. And the last thing it's saying is keep your Synology router updated, which you should always do for all of your network devices. So we could get eNews, register a Synology account and get the latest updates. We could check update settings. So click here to modify your SRM update settings. And we'll take a look at that. So under the update settings, we could have it set to the newest SRM in all updates, which I highly recommend you do. We could do important updates only, or you could check for SRM updates automatically. I'm going to leave it on this default because I always want this to be up to date. So there was an update for the router and I did do that. But before we get into creating the networks, let's take a look at the interface. If you've ever used a Synology NAS, this does look pretty familiar. At the top, we have our network center. Then we have our Wi-Fi connect. We have safe access. We have control panel. We have package center. And then we have SRM. If we click at the top, this brings us to our main menu. And this is going to show us all the applications that we have. And if we want one of these applications on our desktop, all we need to do is grab it and then drag and drop. So the first one I'm going to do is security advisor. So we're going to drag and drop that onto our desktop. And let's go through the security advisor to make sure that everything checks out. So it says, welcome. What are you mainly using your Synology router for? Home, personal use, or for work and business? I'm going to say work. 
business. Now it's going to do a scan and tell us what we need to do to bring it up to the security standards. All right, and it came back with two different warnings, one for account and one for network. So let's take a look at the account. The thing we're getting a warning on is for our password strength. So let's click on that and then view. It's saying password strength rules do not meet requirements for work and business. Enabling additional password strength rules enforces stronger user account passwords and makes user accounts less likely to be compromised. This is the recommended action that Synology thinks that we should take in the advanced settings under user. Please enable the following password strength rules. Include mixed characters, include numeric characters, include special characters. So let's open the control panel. And under the control panel, we'll just check each one of these off and then we'll press apply. Now going back to our security advisor, we could scan again and hopefully that warning is gone. And the next warning we're getting is under our network. So let's check what that is. So it has automatic redirection of HTTP to HTTPS and that's disabled. So we're gonna wanna enable that. I'll click on this, we'll press view. And then it's saying in the SRM settings, please enable automatically redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So we'll go to our control panel. And these are the default ports, 8000, 8001. I am gonna just leave it at the default, but you can change it to something else. And then we're gonna automatically redirect them and then press okay. Now, after running another scan in Security Advisor, you could see that everything is good. Now we're gonna take a look at the package centers. Within the package center, this allows us to download different packages that don't come by default onto the Synology router. So we have our safe access, which is already here. We have a VPN plus server. We have a threat prevention. We have a download station. We have a DNS server, media server, and then we have a radius server. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the VPN plus server and the threat prevention, and we will do videos on that later on. Next, we need to create our network. So we're gonna go up to the network center, and this has a bunch of different things we could do. We have our status, we have the internet, we could do some port forwarding, we could do local network, which is where we'll do our network configs. We have traffic control, we have security, and then we have our operation modes. So we're gonna go into our local network. And these are the networks that Synology gives us by default. We have a primary network and then we have a guest network and we can't delete either of them. So if we click on our guest network because we wanna have that on 192.168.15.1 and you can see it's currently at 192.168.2.1. So I'm gonna click on the network, we're gonna to go to edit and then we're just gonna edit the local IP to be 192.168.15.1 and this will be a slash 24 and we could give it a VLAN ID of 15. Under VLAN ID, we have allow managing Synology router through this network. Obviously we wouldn't wanna do that for our guest, but we wanna have that for our primary. And then we're gonna enable isolation so our guests can't see anything. They could just go out to the internet. Under Wi-Fi, Synology creates a guest network for us called Synology Guest, and I'm just gonna leave it at that, that's fine. And then we have our IPv4 DHCP. So we want to have an IPv4 DHCP server running, but we need to change the subnet. So it'll be 192.168.15.2 to 254. And then our gateway is gonna be 192.168.15.1, and we're gonna have that as our primary DNS as well. Now that we've set our start IP, end IP, our gateway and our DNS, we could press okay and these settings will be saved. Now that we have our guest network switched over to the correct subnet, we need to create two more networks, the staff and the IOT. So under our network center and the local network, we could click on create. Under the network name, I'm gonna name the staff and then the IP address for the staff is gonna be 192.168.5.1. We're gonna use this as a slash 24 and I'm gonna give it a VLAN ID of five. We're not gonna allow this network to manage our Synology router, and I'm not gonna check off enable network isolation. If you want this to just have internet access, you could leave enable network isolation, but we're gonna put firewall rules in place to allow this to get to a NAS and maybe a printer in our next video. I'm gonna press next. Now, if we want one of the physical interfaces on our Synology router to be a part of the staff network, this is where we could do it. I'm gonna put it on port number one, and then I'll plug my computer into port one and make sure that we're getting an IP from staff. Port number two is in the primary network, and we can't reassign this. This is so that we don't get locked out of our router. Now we'll press next, and this is where it's gonna ask us if we wanna set up a Wi-Fi network. We'll set up a Wi-Fi network, we'll call it staff, and give it a password of test1234 and press next. And this last part is just our summary showing us all that we've done and we could press apply. The staff network's now created. We need to create the IoT network. I'm just gonna speed through this. So we'll click on create and then I'll call it IoT. The IoT local IP is gonna be 192.168.25.1. I'll give it a VLAN ID of 25. We're not gonna allow this to manage the router and I'm gonna leave on network isolation for this network. I'm not gonna assign it to any physical ports. 
and then I'll give it a Wi-Fi SSID of IoT and then a password of test1234. We'll press next and then we'll review the summary and press apply. Now we have all the networks created and when we create a network, it gives us a DHCP pool. So if we click on the IoT and then go to edit, it's gonna show us general ethernet port Wi-Fi IPv4 DHCP and IPv6. Let's click on IPv4. You can see that the DHCP server is enabled and it starts at dot two and goes up to 254, which you can change this if you'd like. Now let's take a look at VLAN tag. So if we click on VLAN tag, we could see our WAN, we have internet traffic, which is untagged. And then on port one, we have the staff network, which is on VLAN five and it's untagged. This is acting as an access port for the staff network. Port two, three, and four, these are all configured currently as trunk ports. We have our primary network as the untagged, and then we have our guest, our IoT, and our staff as tagged networks. So if we plugged in another switch, like a Ubiquiti switch, that allows us the all profile, which is a trunk. So once we put in VLAN tags into the switch, we'd be able to access these networks, and we will go over that in another video. So I've now plugged this computer into the staff network, and let's see what IP we're getting. So I'll type in IP config. And you can see I'm getting an IP from 192.168.5.126. So we are in the staff network. Now let's go into a web browser and see if we could hit the Synology router. We shouldn't be able to hit it. So I'll type in 192.168.1.1. And we're not able to get there. I'll open up another tab and we'll type in 192.168.5.1, which is the gateway for the staff network. And we're not able to get there either. So that's going to be it for this video on the Synology RT6600AX router. My first impressions is it's very easy to use and I really like the interface. If you're used to any Synology products, this interface will be familiar to you. There are other things like load balancing that we'll be able to take a look at in future videos. If there's anything that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.